Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at Emily Wants to Play and the secret story you may not know. On the surface, Emily Wants to Play is a very straightforward jump scare horror game. We find ourselves in the shoes of a hapless pizza delivery man who, after making his way inside the house he has been requested to deliver to, finds himself trapped within its walls and unable to leave until 6am. The problem is that each hour that passes he encounters a different doll, each possessed it would seem by the spirit of a demon on a mission to make sure he never leaves alive. These dolls seem to be controlled by a demonic little girl named Emily, who, as the game's title suggests, just wants to play. And so, as each hour passes, we must play by the rules of each of these three dolls, usually the opposite of what is written on this whiteboard. For example, Kiki must be kept within our vision until she vanishes once more. With Mr. Tatters the Clown, we must stare at him and not move a muscle until he disappears. And finally, we must flee from Chester, the ventriloquist dummy, and break his line of sight. Emily herself must be located somewhere in the house while the lights are off, using only our trusty flashlight and tagged, repeating this process until 6am when we are finally allowed to leave, seemingly unharmed. So with the premise of this strange and scary game out of the way, let us now turn our attention to the hidden backstory and lore that can be found within the walls of this paranormal house. Answers that actually explain why Emily is acting this way and how she came to be alone with these creepy dolls in the house to begin with. In order to piece together this story, we need to find the various audio logs left around the house by Emily's mother, as well as several handwritten notes from Emily herself. These reveal a secret story that you may or may not be familiar with, which explains the events of the game. With a little theorising on our part too, that is. We know the basic foundation for the story of Emily Wants to Play is as follows. Emily and her parents had moved from their old home into this house, and this is where the troubles began. It seems Emily wasn't always so demonic, in fact it seems this house actually changed her mind in some way and caused her to misbehave and act out. We learn this from an audio log found in the parents' bedroom from Emily's mother. Ever since we moved in, Emily started acting different. She really liked our old house, but we had to move. I guess it really stressed her out. So this house seems to change Emily's behaviour, and from there things only became worse. Emily's mother went to a psychiatrist to try and get an opinion on what was causing her daughter to act out. My psychiatrist says I should start recording a log to help with my depression. He doesn't know. It's all about Emily. I can't tell him anything about that. But I'll record myself anyway. Maybe it'll help. It seems strange the mother wouldn't send her daughter to the doctor directly, and this peculiar behaviour on the part of Emily's parents may explain some of their other actions later on. While it seems Emily's parents did love her, their need to shelter their child seemed to play into her dark transformation. Emily was expelled from several schools due to her bad behaviour, which culminated in her actually lashing out at another classmate and harming her. Emily hurt a girl in school today. She's not allowed to go back. This is the third school she has been to. We're going to keep her home now. As you just heard from the clip, Emily's mother and father now had to homeschool their daughter and keep her within the house 24 hours a day. This house was already changing Emily, but upon being contained within its walls all day, Emily's mind frame rapidly grew crueler and more wicked. We bought her a puppy. It was so cute. We thought it would help her. Poor puppy. Emily didn't like it. It was around this time that her parents discovered three mysterious dolls hidden beneath the house in a basement area. While these dolls looked pretty creepy, at least they seemed to keep Emily out of trouble, at least for a short time. She bonded with them it seems, and her mother seemed happy with this change in her daughter's attitude, and so allowed this bond to grow. There was a box of three very strange dolls down in the basement. Emily talks to them as if they can hear her. Maybe it's a good sign. It's the first positive thing in a long time. 
Unfortunately, this wasn't the best course of action as Emily only grew more obsessed with these dolls and her mind more detached from reality and the loved ones around her. Because of this, her parents began feeling increasingly nervous around their own daughter. She had attacked another student, killed the family dog, and now she was obsessed with these dolls. She would even watch her parents from their doorway while they slept. This all led to Emily's mother and father locking her away in the basement of their house. A strange move, but they obviously felt desperate and afraid of what their daughter may do next. No one will help us. No one can help us. This house had a basement in it. We made a place for Emily down there. My husband hid the entrance so that no one could ever find it. We were scared of our own daughter. She was standing in our bedroom last night staring at us. We're going to start locking her down in the basement. Now before we reach the end of Emily's story within this house, and before we listen to the final recordings from her mother, let's backtrack a bit and take a closer look at some of the notes left by Emily around the house. These notes tell a story of how Emily's mother and father attempted to eventually take the dolls away from her. However, she did everything she could to make sure this never happened. See, Emily felt such a connection with these dolls that she even states, My friends helped me. They love me. Emily bonded with these seemingly lifeless toys and made a new family for herself in the basement. Resenting her mother and father for locking her away in the basement when times grew tough for them due to her outbursts. She said, They don't care about me. They never loved me. Essentially, these notes reinforce the audio logs left by Emily's mother and confirm our suspicions of this sad story. Speaking of those audio logs, let's jump back and listen to the final few found in the heart of the basement. The first is pretty chilling and describes how Emily's mother found her mysteriously dead, though without any injuries, when visiting her in the basement one evening. I went down to the basement today to bring Emily some food. She was laying on the floor lifeless. She wasn't breathing. She didn't have a pulse. She didn't have any injuries. We can't go to the police. How can we explain this? It seems as though Emily gave her soul over to the dolls and became one with them. In doing so, perhaps gaining control over them and living on as a ghost trapped within the walls of this creepy old house. This would remain a mystery to everyone though, as Emily's parents never reported her passing to the police out of fear they would be arrested. Again, another strange choice for a parent to make, but then things got even weirder. Let's listen to the final two recordings from Emily's mother, which seem to confirm this to us. Emily's gone, but the dolls keep appearing around the house. I don't know if this is just me imagining it, or if this is really happening. Either way, we have to leave this place. <laughs> The first audio log explains how these dolls were moving around the house freely after Emily's death. They would appear in rooms at random and this creepy and unexplained phenomenon caused Emily's parents to flee the house. However, judging by the second recording, which appears to have come from the demons possessing these dolls, the parents never made it out alive and were themselves victims of this house. It's been over a month now and the police still haven't found any leads on the bizarre death of a local couple. The couple was found lifeless in their living room as neighbors were jogging by. The front door was wide open and the bodies could be easily seen from the street. There were no signs of forced entry, and the police have ruled out burglary as a motive. So we know that Emily fell prey to whatever evil spirits reside over this house, an entity that seems to have control not only over Emily's mind, but also the spirits of the souls inhabiting the three dolls. This sketch from Emily found in the storeroom seems to display this to us. We see a force controlling everyone beneath it scrawled on this page. This leads me to personally believe that the reason Emily got on so well with these dolls and felt so close to them was because they housed the spirits of other children who lived within this house and also fell prey to the evil force within it. These children were turned into malicious demons, just like Emily, and now live on within the bodies of these dolls, terrorising any adults who enter the house. However, they only want to play. As we learn from the game as we progress, abiding by their rules grants those haunted safe passage. I guess even evil demon children want to find a playmate, right? 
For Emily's parents, they unfortunately did not play along, and so died at the hands of their tormentors. It appears the demon within this house isn't strong enough to tackle an adult's mind, and so it possesses children and then gets them to do its bidding. Emily was simply the latest victim of this cruel spirit, although strangely, she never possesses a doll herself. Maybe this means Emily now has control over the other dolls, and the demon then controls her, essentially making Emily the puppet of a puppet master. Either way, it ended badly for her parents, and anyone else that now enters this cursed building. This is the secret story of Emily Wants to Play. And that's it for today's video, please remember to give it a like if you did enjoy watching, and maybe drop a comment too, as well as subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications so you never miss an upload. This channel specialises in variety horror content, including creepypasta readings, horror gaming facts and theories, and general interest pop culture horror videos. So, if you are interested in all things spooky, you'll find something to enjoy here at Super Horror Bro. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.